Hi, thank you for joining us today for PHA Classroom, PH 101, What You Need to Know, Understanding Your Diagnosis. My name is Jill Zajak, and I'm the Patient Education and Program Manager at Pulmonary Hypertension Association. I'm happy to have Jean Elwing joining me today as your presenter on PHA Classroom. Jean Elwing completed her undergraduate in medical education at St. Louis University. She remained at St. Louis University and completed a combined residency in internal medicine and pediatrics. She received her fellowship training in pulmonary and critical care medicine at the University of Cincinnati. In 2007, she joined the faculty in the College of Medicine at the University of Cincinnati. She is currently a professor of medicine and the director of the pulmonary hypertension program in the division of pulmonary critical care and sleep medicine. Her clinical and research focus is pulmonary vascular disease and pulmonary hypertension. I welcome you today. Jean, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here. As mentioned, I'm going to be talking with you about pulmonary hypertension. We're going to talk about definitions, understanding diagnosis, and review of the clinical classifications. So first of all, pulmonary hypertension is a big group of diseases. This is high blood pressure in the lungs. It's diagnosed regardless of cause by increased blood pressure in the lungs by right-sided heart catheterization. Normal is an average blood pressure around 15. Those who have elevated blood pressures above 20 meet the criteria for pulmonary hypertension. So what is it when you have pulmonary arterial hypertension? This is what many of you listening have. This is pulmonary hypertension that's due to small blood vessel change in the lungs. This has caused increased blood vessel, vessel pressure and resistance in those blood vessels, which makes the right side of the heart work harder. So as I mentioned, big group of diseases called pulmonary hypertension. That's increased blood pressure in the lungs with a mean pressure of greater than 20 by right-sided heart catheterization. But if you meet definition for that, specific group of conditions that are affecting the lung blood vessels, we have to say that the pressure is not coming from the heart, meaning it's not extra pressure or fluid with that wedge pressure we get on your heart cath being 15 or less. And it has to show us by your heart catheterization that you have resistance in the circuit, in the blood vessels in the lungs. With a PVR or pulmonary vascular resistance of three or greater, or 240 dynes. Now these are specific findings you will get on a cath and you'll see those in the report. And that's one of the reasons why we want to do your heart catheterization in a center that's, that has experience in doing these heart catheterizations so we get all of the data we need on the first attempt. So again, pulmonary hypertension. This is high blood pressure in the lungs, higher than normal. It can be caused by many conditions. It's extremely important for us to narrow down the cause. The cause will determine management, and we'll talk about that at length. Pulmonary arterial hypertension is blood vessel disease in the lungs. Those blood vessels are constricted. The lining is narrowed. It's becoming harder and harder for blood to flow through those small vessels, and that causes stress and strain on the right side of the heart. So we have to look at this whole picture and try to figure out the whys so we know how to best treat you. So one of our best tests we use to try to sort this out, to try to see if you have high blood pressure in some way that's non-invasive is the echocardiogram. The echocardiogram shows us how the blood is flowing through the heart. And if it's flowing in a certain way that it's backing up through the tricuspid valve, we can estimate your pressures in your lungs. Also, when we look at that echocardiogram, we show how well the heart is tolerating those high pressures. Is the right heart enlarged? Is it working well? Is there fluid around it? All of those things are essential for us to understand best how to treat you. So is the right heart tolerating the pressures or is it not? That tells us a lot about how you will do and how aggressive we need to be to get you to feel better as soon as we can. So first, let's talk about what's normal. Normally, blood vessels in the lungs are wide open. They tolerate lots of change in flow and they dilate easily. 
blood comes in through the top part and the bottom part of the veins to the right heart. Those are the vena cava, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. This empties blood into the right atrium, down to the right ventricle, and out to the pulmonary vessels. If these are obstructed, the right heart is going to struggle. And that's what we need to know by your testing and how you feel. So here's an example of someone who has high blood pressure in the lungs. These blood vessels are really, really narrowed. And you'll see here, normally blood flows easily through this circuit. And blood exchanges oxygen and carbon dioxide in these small air sacs in the lungs. But in someone who has pulmonary arterial hypertension or other forms of pulmonary hypertension, these blood vessels may be narrowed. You can't exchange gas normally and that causes pressure to back up in the right heart because there's high resistance in those circuits. And here you can see that once normal size right ventricle has gotten thicker and bigger and it's not working as well because it's not in its normal shape or size. So what's happening on the microscopic level? Well, normally the blood vessels are wide open. They are distensible. They can get bigger when you go out and go up the stairs or go on a run. But in patients who have pulmonary arterial hypertension, those blood vessels are getting smaller and smaller in terms of the inside, that lumen of the, of the vessel, until it's almost completely gone. We don't want to wait to meet you until here. We want to meet you somewhere between this normal vessel and this narrowed vessel so we can start medication to help your symptoms as quickly as possible. So we talked a lot about pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension, that big group of diseases with high pressures, with means on right heart catheterization of more than 20. When we have pulmonary arterial hypertension, as I mentioned, that's the group of conditions where we have blood vessel disease in the lungs and they're narrowed. That's group one disease, pulmonary arterial hypertension. Now, if that wasn't enough to break it down that way, we have multiple other sets of breakdowns we're gonna go through. In group one disease, the majority of patients who are affected don't really have a cause. They're known as idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension patients. There are some small group that have inherited this from a family member. That's called heritable disease. And then there are some that are associated with a medical condition they may have developed over time, like liver disease, connective tissue disease, or HIV. And those patients need specific medications. They're a small group of patients, PAH patients are, but we have medications that can target their blood vessels. The group two patients have pulmonary hypertension because of that increased filling pressures from the left side of the heart. Group three, because of lung disease from multiple causes. Group four, chronic blood clots or small obstructions in those blood vessels in the lungs. Or group five, a miscellaneous group. We call this miscellaneous not because it's not important, but just because it is a group of diseases with many different mechanisms we don't fully understand how best to manage. So now let's break it down. Let's start with World Symposium Group 1 disease, pulmonary arterial hypertension. Again, mean pressure on heart catheterization of more than 20 with high resistance in the circuit with those filling pressures from the left heart being normal. Okay, we define this disease by the fact that there's problems in the blood vessels in the lungs, high resistance in that circuit. This is caused, as I mentioned, about half for no real reason. That's idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension. Genetic diseases or heritable disease or it can occur because you get exposed to something, medications or drugs and toxins like methamphetamines. Other things can be associated like in general heart disease. You can be born with a hole in your heart that increases the flow through the lungs over time and then the blood vessels change and that raises the blood pressure in the lungs. Or you can have it because of secondary causes, connective tissue disease, HIV, liver disease, just to name a few. So it's very important for us to understand this condition because, as I mentioned, this is the condition where we have special medications approved to treat people in this group. Group 2 disease is pulmonary hypertension related to left heart disease. That's when the heart is stiff or weak 
and it causes backup of pressure in the lungs. You can have this from a numerous causes. It can be because of valve disease or because you had a heart attack or because you've developed changes in the sac around your heart, which restricts its movement. All the causes result in increased pressure in the lungs because of the left heart not being able to move blood normally. And you can see here two examples where the heart is normal, but the left heart is dilated. It's weak, it can't squeeze well. You can see here where the heart is stiff. It's thicker. If you compare the left side of the heart here to the left side of the heart here, this is thin and bigger. This one's thick and smaller. So the blood can go in, but can't really get out normally because it can't relax fully. So both of these things are problematic because instead of the blood going out to the body, it will back up into the lungs and it will raise the pressure. And actually this is when you get fluid in your lungs, pulmonary edema. So very different than the first group we talked about, pulmonary arterial hypertension. They get more left, sorry, they get more right-sided dilation, dysfunction, and swelling. So important differential. So now let's go on to group three disease. That related to lung disease. Very common condition also. Second to our left heart disease and frequency. So this is related to lung disease or low oxygen levels. And it can be caused by COPD, like emphysema or bronchitis, scarring in the lungs, or otherwise known as pulmonary fibrosis, sleep apnea, or being at altitude long term. So normally the air sacs are very healthy, they're thin walled, but when you have scarring, they get thicker and they don't work as well. Or if you get emphysema, you have loss of those air sacs, and then you have less blood vessels to exchange gases. So for whatever reason, loss of, of the air sacs or scarring, you have loss of the small vessels and then increased vasoconstriction because of low oxygen and your pulmonary pressures or your lung blood pressures go up. So this is something we need to be aware of and it can occur frequently in patients with the conditions I mentioned. So here's just another way to look at this pulmonary hypertension due to lung disease usually causes mild increases in the blood, blood pressures in the lungs over time. It usually isn't rapid in onset, and it usually doesn't reach the highest pressures we sometimes see with patients who have pulmonary arterial hypertension. But we really need to understand this because the treatment for this condition is not medications for the blood vessels in the lungs specifically. It's to treat the lungs themselves. So very different management. So now let's move on to group four disease or chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. This is a condition where we have a blood clot that goes to our lungs and the majority of us are able to take care of that blood clot by our body resolving it and preventing new ones by taking blood thinners. But there's a fraction of us, about 5% or so, who keep our blood clots, who can't clear them. And over time, some of those patients develop increased blood pressure in the lungs because of that. So this is something we need to be aware of. We need to detect it because there's totally different treatments for this kind of pulmonary hypertension than the other types. So here you can see a beautiful picture of someone who has blood flowing nicely through blood vessels here, and then you hit a roadblock. That's an old blood clot, blood clot in the lungs. And that needs to be addressed for this patient's heart to function normally. So important that we know that there's options to treat this, including surgery, catheter, balloon dilation, and medications. So first we've got to detect it so we can treat it properly. So moving on to group five. Group five is a miscellaneous group of pulmonary hypertension caused by unclear or multifactorial mechanisms. What's important here is we don't know how best to manage this group of patients. If you have this kind of pulmonary hypertension, the most important thing is to try to address the underlying cause and work closely with your doctor to see if there are any clinical trials available for you to see if it may affect 
your pulmonary pressures or pulmonary hypertension or the underlying medical condition. This can be caused by hematologic or blood disorders or splenectomy, anemias, or some blood cancers, systemic disorders like sarcoidosis, Langerhans, neurofibromatosis, some kind of vasculitis diseases where there's inflammation in the lungs, or a rare lung disease that predominantly affects women, which is lymphangiolimomatosis or LAM. There's also metabolic disorders, which are quite rare, except when they're happening in your family. And they are important because we don't really understand how best to manage these conditions when they cause pulmonary vascular changes. So we really need to work on better understanding this so we can treat this better in the future. The other metabolic disorder that is more common is thyroid disease. Thyroid diseases need to be checked and evaluated when we meet somebody with pulmonary hypertension because sometimes addressing that can really help how well controlled the pulmonary hypertension is. So now let's take a step back. Let's go back to pulmonary hypertension, that big group of diseases where pressures are elevated for multiple causes. So the majority of patients, nearly two thirds, have elevated blood pressure in the lungs because of left heart disease. The second biggest group are those due to lung disease. This is followed by our patients who have pulmonary arterial hypertension, those with chronic thromboembolic disease and miscellaneous group of diseases that are not well classified in this study. So just remember, the number one cause of elevated blood pressure in the lungs is actually the left heart. The left heart has very good treatments for weakness of the left heart or, in, or things like valve disease. The stiffness of the left heart is more difficult to manage, but we oftentimes can address symptoms by controlling the underlying causes. So extremely important to identify the cause to determine best ways to help people feel better. So thank you so very much for joining me for part one of PH 101, what we need to know about evaluation and diagnosis. I hope you join me for part two.